This video is brought to you by the Brown Lab at Virginia Tech. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over how to use Chimera X for structural analysis and alignments. Let's start off by opening 3W7F. This is a pigment from Staphylococcus aureus that protects the bacteria from the host immune system. There are two copies of this enzyme, so we can delete chain B. Let's focus on the ligand residues and label them with the view ligand and label ligand commands. By default, the label height is 0.7 angstroms, but we can make it bigger with the label height command. Let's also remove the waters for this analysis with the delete solvent command. Now let's label the residues with side chains shown with the label at at display command. At at display refers to an atom level attribute named display. The command essentially labels all residues with displayed atoms. Several of these side chains could be donating hydrogen bonds to phosphate oxygens. Let's measure the distance between the side chain oxygens of serine 21 and tyrosine 248 to the same phosphate oxygen with the distance command. These distances appear to be consistent with hydrogen bonding, but let's double check. We can start to limit our H-bond search with the select FPS command to make sure that we are only looking at bonds to the lipid. Then, with the H bonds cell restrict cross reveal true log true command, we can find H bonds with one in selected and report the results in the log. You can see that the distances we measured earlier are consistent with these H bonds shown in blue. Let's remove the H bonds and the distance measurements. Now let's look at clashes, which are unfavorable interactions where atoms are too close, and contacts, which are all kinds of direct interactions, polar, nonpolar, favorable, and unfavorable. Make sure the FPS residues are still selected and run the contact, cell, restrict, cross, reveal T, log T, select T command. In the log, atom to atom contacts are listed in order of decreasing VDW overlap. Positive indicates VDW spheres that intersect, zero indicates that they're just touching, and negative if they don't intersect at all. Let's deselect everything that isn't a protein with the tilde cell tilde protein command. Now list the selected residues in the log with the info residues cell command. We can see that the serine and tyrosine are still on our list. Let's clean this up for the next step by removing the contact pseudobonds and clearing the selection. Chimera X can calculate the molecular lipophilicity potential map for proteins with the MLP command. The dark cyan areas are more hydrophilic and the gold yellow areas are most lipophilic. Let's limit the protein surface display to atoms within 6.3 angstroms of the ligand. We can also hide the ribbons and proteins so we just have the pocket and the ligand. Let's look at the B factor values which indicate which parts of the structure are more or less flexible. Display all atoms with the preset sticks command and show ligands as spheres with the style ligand sphere command. The color by attribute command shows the lowest B factors in blue and the highest in red. The lowest B factors are in the protein core and the highest cover the active site and are in the C terminus on the other side. Let's move on to alignments and morphing. Open up 2ZCO. This is another structure of the enzyme without the ligands. Go ahead and change the preset back to original. Now we can align these two models with the matchmaker or MM command. 
Here, we align model number 2 to model number 1 and show the residue alignment. Matchmaker starts with a sequence alignment, then fits the aligned residues in 3D by pairing their alpha carbons. The match statistics are shown in the log and the residue pairs used for the final fit are highlighted in orange. Let's quickly clear the selection. Click on any part of the orange box to select these residues. We can then invert the selection and display the atoms of the protein where the fit wasn't good. Let's clear the selection again and try morphing between the two proteins to better visualize the differences. With this morph command, we can morph from protein 1 to protein 2 over 60 frames. It's now clear where the major differences between these two structures are. You can show Protein 1's models if you want to see the pocket, but right now we're interested in the ligand, so let's hide the surfaces, ribbons, and atoms. Now let's show FPS and MG. We can save the morph with the record button or with the movie record and movie encode command. That's all for this video. You can check out our playlist of other Chimera X tutorials if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching.